All right there. Here we go. Welcome to our class, Mastering Swing Trading. Now, this class is a two-session class, today and next Sunday at the same time. Now, I've divided the class in half because there's a lot of rules and guidelines you have to learn in order to start implementing swing trading. And then once you've had a chance to digest these, next week we're going to be looking at strategies and how to make successful trades using swing trades. Now, the, there are two handouts for you uh, that are in your on your screen. You can just copy them or, or share them or print them, and they'll give you some general information. I've also give you links to a lot of different strategies that are used for swing trading and that strategy and how it's used for specifically swing trading. Now, there is some confusion out there. So we're going to talk first about what swing trading is because a lot of people mix it up. Now, Wikipedia describes swing trading as a speculative trading activity in any financial market whereby instruments such as currencies are bought and sold at near the end of a down, up or a down trend or swing. And this is exactly what swing trading is. It's all about trading on trend lines and tops and bottoms, peaks and valleys. Where opposed, a lot of traders, for some reason, think the word swing trading is very similar to day trading. But day trading is a lot more complicated and requires a lot more time and effort. Day trading requires you to be almost sitting at your computer all day long watching the markets. Where swing trading is a lot more relaxed, a lot more leisurely, a lot less intense, and generally less capital requirements. Swing trading is different from day trading because when swing traders trade, they leave their trades running for more than one day or even a month or more. So swing trading is a short to interim term trend following trading technique. And it is involving trends only. Okay, and it's the swing of the markets. Generally, swing traders look for minor trend reversals to enter trades in the direction of the main trend. For example, in a main uptrend, swing traders will enter on the minor pullback in anticipation that the price will continue back to the uptrend. In other words, <clears throat> they buy on dips or they sell on peaks. They take advantage of ease in the market when the buyers in an uptrend, when the buyers just take a breath and let the price ease down a little bit, you would enter the market at that bottom. In reverse is when a price is going down. At some point, the sellers get exhausted. Or they get tired out and they take a breath and the price will recover a wee little bit and a down trade, a trader, a swing trader trading a down market would enter it when it peaked up to take advantage of that little movement. Okay. So they're anticipating that the asset, whether it's a stock or a currency, will continue overall for the next day or week in the same direction in which it's going. So they, when it peaks down, they know it's going to at least go back to where it was. They'll buy it and then let it run and continue in its uptrend. So, for example, in a main uptrend, swing traders will enter on the minor pullback in anticipation that price will continue in an uptrend. Therefore, trend reversals, retracement, Fibonacci levels, support turned resistance and resistance turned support levels, traders' action zone levels are important levels where swing traders look to enter trades. Swing trading is typically a short to intermediary term trend following system lasting anywhere from 1 to 30 days. Traders who swing trade typically look for trend reversals and retracements for their extra entry and exit points. Now, with swing trading, it's easy to manage to take profits and stop losses because you can actually place your stop loss a bit further away from the market price to avoid getting stopped out prematurely. And also your target profits a place a bit further away so your, re your risk to reward ratio is at least one to two or higher. Swing trading is much easier to learn and do th than day trading. Trading transaction costs due to spreads are much lower than that of day trading because you're making less trades. 
you have a lot more time to analyze trades and then take trades and therefore swing trade can suit anyone who has a regular full-time job. Swing trading is much less stressful than day trading. Profits make a much larger in a day in a day trading because you let your trades run for more than one day. So the chance to increase profit are much greater in day trading. Swing trading allows swing traders to ride out the trend for maximum profit ex extraction using the best trailing stop techniques. <clears throat> so swing trading isn't time intensive and money intensive and it just employs a basic set of guidelines and rules and it is a lot less stressful. It's a very good way to enter the markets or if you're a novice trader to trade in the markets. Too many people want to be day traders and day trading is time intensive, knowledge intensive, capital intensive. So I prefer swing trading and there will be times that I will day trade but I like looking at the big picture and for me swing trading is ideal for that. I would rather be making 100 pips to 200 pips profit per trade than a bunch of trades making 10 pips at a time day trading. Okay. Swing trading provides that opportunity. Or that's what I like. For you, you may like day trading. I'm not saying one is better for you than the other. So the answer to this question is really for you to decide. And if you're wondering who is more profitable, swing traders or day traders, the answer is, both can be profitable or both can be disastrous. Okay. In both cases, you do have to learn what you're doing and understand the markets. Day trading requires a huge time commitment, much so much more than swing trading. Since day traders change positions at, smut, at such small time increments, one minute, three minute, 15 minute, they have to constantly monitor their positions to make sure they're still in a profitable place. This can lead to serious personal stress over time. A lot of people that day trade do so as a full-time job, either as part of a corporate institution or independently. Swing traders, on the other hand, use time frames that are much longer. You generally hold your security for several days or weeks. You still have to make sure that you're in a favorable position, but you have some breathing room. Just because the markets tip against you for an hour or two or for the afternoon, you have time to wait for the markets to recover to exit your position. It's entirely possible to profit from swing trading on a part-time basis while holding down a full-time job is something else. Okay. This flexibility makes it a great option for people who want to learn how to trade profitably without devoting their entire lives to it. So for most of you, this is where you should be. Don't mix up day trading. Okay, Day trading is for people who want to have all types of systems, all types of information, have lots of data flowing at them, have lots of technical analysis, and be able to make instant decisions. Okay, Here, you can make a slower decision, enter the market with less stress, use less capital, less leverage, and t time is in your favor. Now, a swing trader depends on three emotions that dominate the market greed, fear, and uncertainty. Now, this isn't yours. This is what dominates all the trading markets. These emotions cause virtually all of the short-term price aberrations that make swing trading a profitable trading strategy. Swing traders try to ignore the tendency to react emotionally to price movement using logic to take advantage of market overreactions. When prices rise quickly, the market or the overall investing market is, tends to act out of greed. When, pro, when you see the non farce payroll report come out and it's extremely good, you see everybody jumping in the market. This is because they're all greedy, where a swing trader sits back and waits for the market to level out and then takes his position because they think the dollar is going to continue up because the report was good and the dollar will continue up for the next three or four days or the dollar might come down and you're taking a down position. But you don't need to have that instant reaction and you're not trading their greed. You're letting their greed drive the prices for you, and then you're taking advantage of them. So let's start out with some simple, basic rules. Okay. Now, 
the biggest rule, not just in trading, but especially swing trading, is go with the trend. You'll hear it over and over. The trend is your friend. And swing trading is all about trading with the main trend. So always go in the direction of the major trend. Yes, you have heard this over and over again, but let me give you specifics. Sit across the room and see if you can see which direction the market is moving. Only take trades in that direction. There are many other ways to determine if a market is trending one way or another. You could use a simple 50-day moving average to see what side of the trend is on. This is usually the side you want to be on. Don't swing trade against the main trend. Even when trades go against you, they tend to gravitate towards the main trend. So going in that direction from the start can save a bad trade from being a loser and with increased odds on the trades going your way. Don't try to be a contrarian. Statistically, you will see that you will be more profitable and more successful trading with the trend. So taking those odd and end trades that look, oh, look at that. That's a great trade to trade against the trend. Statistically, you will end up losing. If you don't believe me, take a look at a stock that's heading down sharply and wait till a positive story comes out. And the stock will rally for a few days, acting like it's moving up, and then will fall once again in the direction of the main trend. Okay. A day trader is what takes advantage of that blip. You're taking advantage of that trend. This doesn't happen every time, but it happens often enough where it's far from random. If it was random, there would be very few trends. And if you look at most markets, there is typically a long-term bias or direction the markets tend to favor. That's the side you want to be on. Where has the stock market gone since Donald Trump was elected? The stock market keeps trying to push that 20,000. Now, we've had days it's eased down, but just because you think some news came out or the Federal Reserve did something and you think the market's going to crash, you're, you're sadly mistaken. What you shouldn't be doing is not when it hits 19.962, trading could go down. You should be waiting till it hits 19.964 and buying it to go up because it will most likely be turned to where it was and continue on that trade. Now, 20,000 is a very significant level. Okay. Now, you have to decide what you want to do when it hits 20000 But if you would have been making trades since, since the election in the U.S. and trading the Dow or the S&P every time it dipped down, you would have been in so much profit, it would have been absurd. You could have made enough to live a year. Okay, Every dip, because it recovered. Every dip, it recovered. This means trading with the trend, because you betting that it's going to turn around and fall before it hits that 20000 level is a big mistake. When it hits the 20,000 level, it doesn't break it, and the trend reverses, then you can get in the market going downside. Because remember, you can always enter the market. The other thing about <clears throat> day, uh, swing trading is you don't want to trade dead markets. The dead markets doesn't mean <laughs> that something horrible is happening. Sometimes the markets just stay in a trend. Oil was popping up and down, up and down. Oil make great swing trading opportunities over the last year. It's been phenomenal. But now, since the OPEC decision, OPEC meeting, it's bobbed up and down, up and down, up and down. But there has, it's really been dead. It's really been a sideways movement. Okay. It doesn't have enough volatility, enough change for you to make profit. So swing traders and day traders make money when markets are volatile. Trading without volatility is like trying to drive a sports car in bumper to bumper traffic. It doesn't go anywhere. So when you get out at a Ferrari and get down the 405 in Los Angeles and it's bumper to bumper traffic, you're sitting there burning gas, burning a $250,000 car's engine with a guy sitting next to you, an old beat up Toyota is burning less gas and has less investment. And he's just going the same direction, same distance you are. Okay. So you don't want to trade in dead markets. Good trading setups need good volatility. Therefore, you need to avoid trading during holiday seasons before earnings announcements, during lunch sessions, and all other times when the market is dead. There is an exception to this rule. Sometimes swing trading methods rely on short-term support and resistance levels. These setups occur specifically when markets are dead, and many traders make a career 
trading these setups. And there's ways to see when a sideways moving market is about to change. And that's a significant way to trade. But a lot of traders don't realize there are three types of trends. You have an uptrend, you have a downtrend, and you have a horizontal trend. So keeping that in mind, you still remain with the trend. But in some of these setups, you wait till the markets are completely dead and wait till they develop a high-low pattern. Then you scalp or short-term trade for a few ticks back and forth. This is the only exception for the rule. To determine if markets are dead or not, or not simply looking at the, you don't simply look at the volume. You see if the average volume is similar to the volume that it was the last five trading sessions. Don't forget to check your schedule for news and reports. This is a number one source of short-term volatility for swing traders and day traders. While we're on the topic, make sure your market has a reasonable spread between bid and offer. You'll find when day trading, especially if you're trading CFDs, or you're trading Forex, you have a spread. Okay, the more exotic or the more rare the, the asset is you're looking at, the bigger this spread is. So you're better off generally unless you're expecting a huge move is to trade with the majors because the spreads are tighter so remember that you have to look at your cost of your trade and that is your spread or if you're if in case you have interest rates or commissions which is very rare but it just depends on what asset and what market you're you're trading in now many swing traders look for beginners books at rec and most beginners books recommend that traders only trade the long side till they feel comfortable trading both sides of the market. The long side is basically an uptrend, prices moving upward, because a lot of new traders have a difficult time with the understanding of selling something you don't own to buy it back later. They have a very difficult time trading downtrends. It's, a, it's an obscure psychological problem. It's just like a lot of traders have a, a, a difficult time understanding how resistance becomes support and support becomes resistance or how the, the exact opposite, same price, exact opposite thing, whether the market's going up or down. But you can very successfully swing trade both sides of the market. And this is very important. You want to look for downtrends as well as you want to look for uptrends. There have been as many opportunities when I started when I was starting out in the markets, would turn on a dime in reverse direction. I would liquidate my long positions, but would not initiate the short and would lose out on extremely valuable opportunities. So remember, markets drop three times faster than they rise because fear is a stronger emotion than greed. Therefore, you literally will lose 50% of your opportunity by avoiding the short side of the market. There's somebody who just wrote in, there's a sound problem. If you're having a sound problem, it's most like the internet on your side. I would advise you to log out and log back in or to check your internet or your speakers. Now, there's another part or another guideline you should follow. Always pay attention to correlation. When I began trading, I was following many stocks that were part of the same industry group, many, mainly tech stocks. No one ever told me that these stocks have a correlation to the market and only about 70 to 80 percent to each other. So the same holds true with commodities and Forex. You don't need to be trading the euro pound, the euro dollar, the euro Japanese yen because they all correlate. Okay? Find the one that is the best asset for you to trade. Just like unless Apple is making an announcement that's independent. You don't need to be trading Apple, Facebook, Twitter, and Google because it's all the tech. If tech is going up because there's a positive thing about tech or tech is coming down, you don't need to be in multiple assets in the same sector. Now, keep in mind, trading highly correlated, trading highly correlated assets is the same as doubling your position size. Don't do it. Make sure you do the simple correlation analyst analysis and make sure that the market you are trading do not have a high degree of correlation to each other. Be independent. If you think that tech is going to go up because something's happening in Silicon Valley, okay, 
Figure out which is the best asset under tech that you should be trading. Which one gives you the most distinct signals? Which one is the best under tech? Should you be in Google? Should you be in Apple? Yo, like, you know, Apple's a little bit negative right now. Okay, maybe you shouldn't be in Apple. Maybe you should be taking Google if you think tech is going to go up. Now, there are many components for you to consider when you are going to swing trade. First is the selection of the asset or the market you're going to trade. You really don't want to be trading all over the place. Figure out if Forex is best for you or commodities are best for you or stocks and even limit it down to a group of assets. You know, be a techie. I, I traded in my, my beginning years. I was an agricultural trader. That's where I stayed because you can't track them all. And you do need to track these assets. Okay. Then determine your, your trade setup. Okay. Determine a specific set of rules in which you are going to trade by. Then you have to determine what signals your entry point, where you can want to put your initial stop loss in all cases. Determine your exit and trailing stops, okay? And then determine your position sizing, okay? These are standard components that you should be sitting down on a piece of paper and writing down and then checking off, and they should be standardized, okay? Not, okay, I only take two pips and I only risk $1,000. There should be, you should come up with your percentages, your win-loss ratio, your target, your size that you can risk per trade, how much you believe in this trade, how close you want to put your stop loss to go back. Because so you have to go back and analyze, can you afford to trade this asset? Because maybe you have to put your stop loss so close that you can't cover the swing of the marketplace. So it's kind of ridiculous to even enter that market. Then you should learn how to use things like trailing stop losses. So as the asset moves in your favor, you continue to move up your stop loss closer and closer so that even if the market crashes, you're stopped out in profit, okay? And then always your position size. A lot of times, if a stock is trading at $1,000, okay, maybe you can't even get in enough position to make enough profit to be worth trading, okay? And so you just push the, the asset or the trade aside. Now, we're going to discuss simple, the simple system of tracking the big money so that you can make swing trades with conviction. So let me reiterate that while the term swing trading may have many different time frames associated to it depending on one's exact implementation, my personal time frame for medium term swing trades is two days to four weeks. I'm never looking to get out of the market less than two days and I'm never looking to be in there more than a month. Okay. One of the key attributes of swing trading that makes it so attractive for so many is as discussed last week, or we're gonna discuss next week in this case, is it does not require that we sit in front of screens all day. The objective is to look out at the beginnings of a swing, a new swing, which are, are often very visually clearly represented. One of the visually clearest turning points is when a stock currency bond or future contract exhausts its downward trend and begins to reverse higher. Now. We're going to look at all these. I mean, there are a whole bunch of guidelines and rules that we have to look at to determine what we should look for in a swing. But you have to establish, you don't have to trade them all. You can just take your standards. Okay? You set your rules, and then you find the assets that are fitting your rules. Okay. The reason for this is while tops take time to develop, bottoms, for the most part, are violent capitulation moves where after the last of the sellers has sold his stock or his asset, there is only one way to go, and that's back up. So that's the nice thing. Trading from a bottom, when an uptrend starts, and you watch that uptrend, you watch start, that asset start pushing up. As it eases back down a wee bit, you drop, jump in and enter that market for a short-term trade, two days, three days, five days, while it recovers to where it was in that uptrend, it still moves up. And there are very specific rules. Fibonacci retracements work wonderfully for these. Now, candlestick charts, by their nature, allow market participants to see price action in a more visually appealing and clear way. This also allows us to detect investor sentiment and emotion. Being able to detect investor emotions, particularly when they run the highest, can often allow traders 
to take the other side of the crowd and quickly make great profitability returns. Now, I know a lot of this is boring, guys. I know. But we have to go through this for you to absorb it. Too many novice traders just want, oh, show me the chart. Show me what to do and let me go do it. We want you to build a foundation of understanding so that I don't have to tell you what to do. You can figure out what to do on your own. So after this webinar is over and you go to the markets, you can say, ah, I see exactly. I can find out. Look what it's doing. I know what to do. So step number one is to understand who controls the market. It's the old story of the bulls and the bears. As much as the media may want you to believe computers are running the market, they aren't. There are simple creation. They are, they are simply creating millions of trades that last a second or two, sometimes a millisecond. Big money moves the market. Sometimes it can be one large fund or it can be multiple players with the same idea. Either way, tracking their activity is simple. It is. Too many people are intimidated by huge hedge funds entering huge trades. I mean, if you actually see a dot plot of a Goldman Sachs move and you see they enter a trade at this hour at 12.15 with 20000 just $20,000. Then at 12.17, they enter it with $200,000. At 12.19, they enter it with $2 million because they're slowly manipulating and moving the markets. And they're trying to attract you in. But you can see all this. Okay. And I say, I say simple as opposed to fundamental analysis, reading financial statements, interpreting cash flow or volume. I am not implying trading is easy. I said tracking what they do is easy. Now, generally speaking, big players want to accumulate a position for a longer term move. It takes weeks or months to build these big positions. Luckily for us, there is a chart that lets us know exactly what they are doing and when it's obvious to us to consider a new swing trade. A candlestick chart tells us if the big money is supporting higher prices or dumping new shares on the market, creating lower prices. A candlestick chart is genius in its simplicity, yet powerful if you have the discipline to take its reading as absolute. Now, for you guys that don't know how to use candlesticks properly. We just finished a three-week course, and probably we're going to repeat it in February or March. But a candlestick chart is one of the best ways to swing trade. A candlestick chart shows the relationship between the high, the low, the open, and the close of a symbol during a specific period. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at monthly charts, daily charts, and weekly charts. In other words, the higher price, lower price, first trade of the month and last trade of the month, or we're looking at a one-hour chart. The highest price it was in that one hour, the lowest price it was in that one hour, the price it was at the beginning of that one hour, and where it closed 60 minutes later. Now, the concept supporting technical analysis is that price discounts the news. We believe as technicians that all factors determining the correct price are already baked into the current price. The theory is the big money has research teams pouring over the numbers, and we simply need to follow their lead. And this is called technical analysis, only because anything done on a chart falls into the area of technical analysis as opposed to fundamental analysis, which is using things like economics data, speeches, headlines. And those speeches, those headlines, those economic reports can you up your trading because they're the ones that give you those peaks and valleys and that volatility when you think, ah, that asset's reversed and coming down or the asset just soared straight up and I'm going to trade it you know, coming back down. Nope, that's the volatility created by Mr. Trump making headlines or OPEC saying something or a terrorist act or a war. Now, how can you argue with that? Real money, real trades. Well, the fundamental analysis community believes technical analysis is fool's gold. They argue that you should, in, should invest money without doing the work yourself and digging deep into the financials. To a certain degree, they are right. But they're making one obvious mistake in their assertion. Swing traders are not investors. 
we are not setting goals to be a long-term shareholder. We are simply looking for a catalyst and a spot to manage risk. So can chart reading help us earn a consistent annual return? In my experience, the answer is a resounding yes. So looking at a chart, a five-year-old could tell you if prices were going up, down, or sideways. The mystery surrounding technical analysis lies in the swing trader, not the charts. You need to set rules, guidelines, and criteria within the charts so that you can define your edge. You might as well be guessing if you don't take the time to organize your components. The swing trader who takes time to create a charting plan will possess a powerful scenario building machine they, that offers opportunity of regular basis. The key is having the patience. Technical analysis becomes a valid method when you have structure, when you have an organized method of interpreting what the big money players are doing, you will start to have that edge. Now, two common methods of doing this are candlesticks and moving averages. Typically, you want to employ one chart that defines a trend and a second that defies entry points. This allows you to interpret when big money is supporting a stock with new highs and higher lows, and the second chart allows you to manage risk. Too many of us view technical analysis as a system to make money. It's not. I know that you may it may sound like I'm contradicting myself, but I'm not. Chart rating gives us ideas and helps us locate profit targets, risk points, and probabilities. It's up to us to manage the trade. The real money is developing trade management skills, and that's what it's all about, is finding the right entry point, the right exit point, how much you're willing to invest and putting it down on paper and building your rules so that you can take advantage of all of this other stuff. You being a hardcore, non-emotional person that's going to invest the time, not the time sitting at a computer, the time of setting your rules. You know, it's like raising your children, giving them a firm set of guidelines to trade by is what will make you successful. Now, most short-term traders make the mistake of reading the net change from the previous close. This is wrong for most traders because you want to know the buying and selling pressure now. It's the most current window. You want to know who was in charge from the open to the close. In other words, even though the price might have gone up in a small time segment, did the bears dominate the market and pull the market way down and the bulls recovered at the very last instant? Okay. Now, in this case scenario, not only is the strong green, but the high from this month is higher than the last month, and the low as well as indicating big money is supporting this stock. So if you're using candles, what you see is here's your open down here, and the bulls were able to push this market up to close up here. Now, the question is, are they exhausted or will they continue to rally? Well, if you look at the next candle on your chart and the bulls kept their momentum and the next candle was able to push you up, that's telling you the bulls are dominating the market. It's a powerful setup. So what we're going to look for now is the price to ease down, not to come back below this, but to ease down because we want to enter the markets on an ease in an uptrend market. So we're going to look for an ease because we know the bulls are dominating this market. Now, we're not looking for a reversal here. We're simply looking for a breather because all these buyers entered this market here. They continue to enter the market. There's a given point where they just get tired. If you imagine like a tug of war and you have one team on one side of the river, another team on the other side of the river, and the bulls are dominating. The guys in the green shirts are pulling them in slowly, surely, but the bulls are fighting back. They yanked hard and pulled two of the first players from the other side into the water. Well, they got a little bit tired because they've been pulling and pulling and pulling. Now, the next session, the bears get a little bit more dominant because they really dug in. Your arms are a little bit tired, but you hold them. And then your replacements come in, and they ended up pulling back and pulled you higher the next session. But guess what? You have no more relief players, or you have more relief players on the bench. But what's going to happen is 
it's going to take a second replacement. So it's going to ease back down before your players get another breath. You're going to get, enter that market as a relief player as it eases down. You're going to jump in, and as all of you get your second win, you're going to pull that market back up. So what we're looking for are the swing highs and the swing lows in the marketplace. Okay. They are crucial pieces of information because we look at this uptrend, and what we're looking at here on this chart is an uptrend. This is what the markets did. The markets – hold on, let me get my marker on here. The market – The markets pushed up, they eased down, they pushed up, they eased back down, they peaked, they pushed back down, they peaked, and they pushed down. And we could almost automatically, and unless you know how to draw a trend line, you need to learn how to draw trends. I don't know why my marker keeps going crazy here. You could have had, oops, it's not a very straight line. Let me give you a straight line here. You could have drawn a trend line from this swing low doo -doo -doo, straight through all of these swing lows. And so, therefore, we had an uptrend. Okay, the, pr the price was moving in a specific determined uptrend, not a whole bunch of little uptrends and downtrends. Okay. If we would have bought at every dip down to this downtrend, each time it dipped down to this downtrend, guess what? We would have bought this asset here. We could have gotten out at this level. We would have bought this asset here. We could have exited at this level. We would have bought this asset here. And all of us could have, all of that would have been profit. Or every time it pushed up, we could have been bringing our stop loss up higher so that our, our trade would have closed when the markets eased back down and we would have locked in profit at this level. We would have re-entered then the market at this level to trade it to go up. And then as it eased back down, our trailing stop loss would have closed us out there. And each time, we would have made a sizable profit. Okay. Now, we'll discuss these strategies in a week from today. But these are easy ways that you can trade and get entry and exit points very easily from a candlestick chart. It's not very complicated because there is a way of using candlestick charts that has 32 interpretations. We're using this for swing trading, and all we're doing is we're looking for uptrends and downtrends, and then the swing highs and the swing lows. So again, if we look at this asset that's on the screen right now, okay, oops, I have a horrible time drawing with this marker here. We would have drawn an uptrend, and every time we had a swing low, we would have entered the market. Okay and then moved our trailing stop loss off and then entered the market, we would have stayed in the market here, but as the market peaked back down, our, our stop loss would have sold us out and we would have made this much profit. Okay. Each time, okay, so we got buy signals and we got sell signals. When the markets reversed itself and started to move in a downtrend, we would have gotten our sell signals here to sell into the market. We would have had the same thing here. And we would have exited at the candles. Okay. We can specifically see the points that we would put as perfect entry points. Okay. This is not very complicated. It's not rushed. The nice thing about swing trading is if you miss one of these, no big deal. You're not rushing to make a decision instantaneously. Okay. But you need to have a plan. Okay. But you can trade reversal swing. This is a reversal swing. This is a reverse swing against the prevailing trend confirmed by a double top and an oscillator divergence. Okay. Now, what does that mean to you? You don't know yet. But you should never be trading with one indicator only. Okay. You should be trading with multiple indicators. Okay. And then you look for the candlestick to give you an entry or exit point. And in this case, we were looking for a reversal. Now, in this case, if you read the candles and you understood the patterns of the candles, this was a very distinct role reversal. See, the three tops are just – neither time could the bulls push those tops higher than they were. And then you got a red or a bearish candle, and this signaled to you that you had a bearish movement. 
you also had a crossover in your, your oscillator, and that divergence is telling you something is happening. And then you also had a drop in volume, and this is telling you that something is about to happen. But this has got to be part of your trading plan, and we're going to look at strategies next week. But let's get started anyway. Okay, now, we have charting time frames. These are very important. Okay. Hourly charts are visited by trade traders at times to eliminate noise and to gain a clearer perspective of the overall trend. But they're a great time frame for two-day plays. So a swing trader should be looking at hourly charts. Now, a 15-minute and a 5-minute trading bar are for day traders and scalpers. They are not for day for swing traders. Okay, We should be dealing with hourly charts because we want to be trading over two days to a month's period. Okay, We're not doing day trading where we're looking for small movements in the current day. Okay. So a day trader would use a 5 and a 15 minute chart. You could be looking at a 1 hour chart, a 2 hour chart, a 4 hour chart. Now for our purposes there are two types of trading. So let's break these down. Okay. First we have wealth trading and then we have income trading. We're only focusing today on income trading. Market trade players who use more than one time frame in his analysis will experience a higher degree of trading accuracy. Remember this, as it is the most important key to understanding why nearly perfect setups in one time frame do fail in others. And they can alert you to being saying that you're making a mistake. Okay. Now, trading styles. There are four different trading styles, but they're broken into two categories, wealth building and income producing. And again, today we're talking about our day traders significantly do income trading and swing traders can do both, but they're really not looking to stay in a trade more than 30 days. So you're looking at something that's producing income. Okay. Now, we have core trading, which lasts weeks to months. This is a wealth building style of trading that attempts to capture major trends in the market or underlying stock. Okay. Weekly charts are used for mostly core trading. Swing trading usually lasts 10 to 10, 2 to 10 days. And this is a wealth building style of trading that is designed to capture short term swings in an ongoing trend while sidestepping the brief counter trend moves. It attempts to take advantage of a very overlooked niche. One that is so short or too short for large institutions and too long for day traders. And that's what's nice. Swing traders fit in between. Daily charts are used by swing traders. So you can use one hour to four hour to one day. Okay. Our trading philosophy calls to have at least one or two wealth building trades always at work. Some of the country's top traders have amassed very large sums of money utilizing one or both of these styles in their trading program. Now, swing trading is more about income producing. It's not producing your income to go in your pocket for a job. It's producing money or income that goes in your bank account. Okay. Now, one of the best secondary Support assets that you can look at, the support indicators is that you can look at is called the Commodities Channel Index. And we're going to use that later along with volume and moving averages to build a trading strategy next week. But one of the most important things is understanding candlesticks. The main difference between Japanese candlesticks and Western bar chart analysis is that Japanese place the highest importance on the relationship between the open and the close of the same day while Westerners place the importance on the close as it relates to the prior period's close. So as long as the underlying asset closes higher than the pre prior day's close, Western, Western thought says it's positive. However, according to Japanese view, this is not necessarily the case. If on an up day, 
the stock closes below its open, a Japanese would regard this as negative. Okay. Now, the Japanese candlestick is a story of the bulls and the bears. And we have to understand this story and the candlestick before we actually start building our trend lines and look at how we do this. But if you tell a story, and it's very easy to tell the story, okay, if on a candlestick you put a line at the open, you put a line at the close, and if you're looking at a one day or one hour, one hour candle is done at the, on the hour, and one hour later, so at the open at that one hour at 12 midnight, you would draw a line across at the open, wherever the open is. Then at one hour later, at one in the morning, you would draw a line at the close. You would then go to put a dot for the highest time, it, it highest price it hit, and a dot for the lowest price it hit. Okay. These become the wicks of the candle. Now, if we step up from the open to the close, that is a bullish candle, or the bulls won. So you can actually tell a story about this. The market's opened up here, okay, and we don't care exactly what order it goes. And the bulls were able to, the bears were able to pull the price down to here. But then the bulls pulled it all the way up to here. But then they tired out, and but they still held on tight to that rope. And they allowed it to close here. They dominated the whole segment. It is just the opposite when the bears went. Okay, so here what happens is you put the line, same line across at the open, but here the close was lower, so you came down the ladder. So that's a bearish candlestick. You still put a dot at the high and a dot to the, the, the low. Connect those wicks. What's the story? Well, the bulls jumped in and pushed it all, pulled the price all the way up to here, but then the bears yanked back and pulled the bulls all the way down to here. They tired out and gave a little bit, but they dominated this entire time frame. Okay, so therefore you have a story of what's going on in the markets. Now, bulls and the bears cannot consistently win more than five battles in a row. Each side typically surrenders to the other after three to five battles are won. However, if the bulls and the bears win significantly more than five battles in a row, a catastrophic loss will be the price paid for such an abnormal winning streak. You very rarely have this. Okay. So we have a true trading opportunity. And this gives us what we call the picture of greed. So when we have three bars up, okay, three green candles, we would think sell. If we get the four, we would even think more positively to sell. When we reach five, we would want to sell. Why? Because here the bulls are still staying dominant. So what's happening is all these uneducated or, or unsavvy investors are still jumping in because they're reading the headlines of the papers. You know, OPEC says oil is going to soar to $79. They're jumping in and jumping in and jumping in. The, 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 the big hedge funds and the, the educated buyers are taking advantage of that surge up to get out of the markets with profit. And they're looking for the reversal. Okay. Now, this you say this is trading against the trend. This is called trading a trend reversal. And we'll talk about this more in detail next week. Okay. We have the exact opposite for a downtrending market. Okay. Now, we can determine this by understanding how candlesticks work and the size and shape of these candlesticks. So we have six general patterns that we would be looking for for day trading or swing trading. We would be looking at, and these all have very complicated Japanese names, but what we're looking at here is we have a high and a low, an open and a close that doesn't move. That means we had a very high and a very low, but the price never moved. Nobody dominated the market segment. Here we have a high up here and a low down here, but the price moved up, so the bulls dominated the segment. Then we go here, where we see no candlestick wicks, so the open and the low were the same, and the top and the, 
and the clothes were exactly like that tells you the bear, the bulls were in utter domination. They have absolute control of the marketplace. Now here is just the reverse of here. Okay. The bears did to the bulls what the bulls did here. And here in this case, we have the exact opposite. Okay. Now, we also have what we call reversal bars. A reversal bar looks like, and this they all have, again, names. We have the hanging man. We have the inverted hammer. Okay. And what happens here is the price opened and closed at the same point. But the bulls weren't able to pull the price up, but the bears were able to pull the price down. That's telling you the bulls were really burned out. So we're get about to get a reversal. Here is the exact opposite scenario. Now we have a price movement here. And again, these have complicated names to them. But what we have here is the bears pulled the market all the way down here, but the bulls were able to recover and pull it back up here. Okay. Exact opposite scenario here, then here and here. These are all called reversal bars. This is telling you the trend is about to reverse itself. So this is when we would consider trading against the trend if we're using Japanese candlesticks. But we have to build a foundation. Okay. And that foundation is where we start next week. And in this case, I will reveal to you a few simple keys to understanding how the markets work. The following concepts to form the cornerstones of any and every sound trading technique or tactic. And then after gaining a clear understanding of these building blocks, the trader will never again find himself confused and not knowing what to do. And then next week, we're going to also look at several strategies, some basic understanding strategies of how to take advantage of swing trading successfully. So on that note, we're going to wind this down. A lot of people have asked, has this been recorded? The webinar is being recorded. It will be sent to you automatically when it is ready. There is no one for you to call, no one you sent emails to, no one to ask for it. If you register with the proper email address to this class, once it is ready, that's going to have to give it a day or two or three. Watch your mail from investing.com and you will receive the link to watch it. If you don't see it, look in your spam or your junk file. Okay. But it's automatically done and there's no person that's involved in this. So like I said, calling customer support, emailing customer support isn't going to get you anywhere. Okay, it's an automatic process and you will get it. So hold on tight, give them a day or two to get it all ready for you and you will receive it in your email. And it's be the email you registered for this webinar with. And otherwise, I will see you all next week. Have a great trading weekend. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for supporting me and investing.com. And be prepared next week because we're going to be learning lots of strategy and lots of rules so that you can start trading. Have a great day now and we'll talk to you soon. Good night.